look at kind of the very beginning, uh, IT, ransomware, kind of the great information that's been pushed out from uh, from Krebs and from Wired and from um, uh, FireEye and others, and how that impacts IT environments. And that's on your one end of your bookend. And we've just sort of talked about the stuff that's in the middle. So these systems that uh, you may, some may classify as IT, some may classify as OT and kind of the really kind of uh, the in-between space with um, architectures and segmentation kind of supporting it. But once you build those architectures and build those segmentations, you're still going to have to allow trusted communication flow from system to system, from interactive users, a variety of different uh, needs, communication paths for not only the systems that Jeff sort of talked about with the ERP and manufacturing execution systems, but also there's some devices and some application sets and, and solutions that are being put in that are for cybersecurity purposes. So collecting data from the OT environment out and kind of aggregating it in this in-between zone or patch repository or uh, AV updates or signature update repositories and kind of being able to go pull from there from an OT environment. So not just the financial or the billing systems that are in between, but think of all the stuff that as a cybersecurity community, we often talk about, well, OT environments aren't doing appropriate patching or they're not doing uh, kind of monitoring and alerting and log collection or, or sound security practices. But as you begin to start to do those things and you have appropriate architectures of where those types of solutions are being placed, those types of solutions are also providing that in-between uh, zone. So from ransomware, as it escalates beyond just IT and it moves into these in-between spaces, the next discussion that we need to have as an industrial control system community and critical infrastructure is what happens when it moves to the next pivot from that in-between zone down into the operational environments? So we're no longer talking about, well, was it an OT attack or was it not? Did it impact? How do you define IT and how do you define OT? But we need to start talking about the cases that clearly move into OT and begin to impact those types of assets. The, uh, the number one thing to kind of think of is just ensuring resilient operations. And this is an area where kind of the different types of OT attacks that could occur, the different types of impacts on system operations, this is where the operators and kind of the resilience of the organization can kind of look towards things that they have done in, through normal events so while this was cyber related, and there's some uniqueness there, had this been a physical event or storm related, if you look kind of specific just to Colonial and the operation across this pipeline over the last 20 years, they've had more than 30 events that have impacted pipeline operations, either in full or in partial. And most of us have never heard of Colonial Pipeline. So a number of people that are on this call, this is a company that is unknown to you, especially if you're not in the U.S. Depending on where you are in the U.S., you may have familiarity, but in regards to what they're doing or what products they're pushing or what would be the impact if it wasn't occurring. That's, in, you know, depending on where you've worked, this may be unknown. And they've had more than 30 different events that were either a uh, rupture or physical impact or Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Katrina. Um, the Harvey outages were probably double in length in regards to how long this cyber related outage is. The, the difference here and kind of as those past events have happened, you kind of look at those kind of 30 different events, none of them really bubbled up to, hey, we've got a whole of government response. We've got executive orders, we've got, uh, you know, kind of fact sheets and declarations of emergencies and states and, and federal agencies declaring different waivers for EPA or DOT. The other kinds of uh, events that have happened didn't sort of reach that. And I think it's it's just, from the perspective of when there's a physical impact, so from a sector, electric sector, natural gas, or pipeline operation, when there's a storm, you know where it was, when it was, what the impact was, and you have a general idea from routine operations of decades of what that restoration and repair is going to look like, time-wise, and when you can anticipate full operations to restore. When you move into the cyber area and you're starting to now focus on how do we ensure we have integrity of our system before we begin operations. How do we ensure safety for our employees, for our customers, for the communities that we service? And now you're talking about integrity of a system that if you were buying that system brand new, you would have had system specification, 
factory acceptance tests, site acceptance tests, thousand hour performance tests. You would have walked through kind of full field point verification. May have been a multi-year project to bring it online. And now some adversary was in and you can sort of see through forensics where they've gotten to and what they may have impacted, but are you certain? And at what level are you positive that you have a system with full integrity that you've restored from, recovered from, and now you can begin to operate? That becomes a less uh, clear path and really will only become clear with more and more exercises and activity and kind of practice the way you play approaches. Um, Jeff's going to walk through a couple of other additional considerations kind of for OT environments. 